Now we're going to take a look at using the stock wizard. The stock wizard is used for setting up stock for mill, router, plasma, lasers, and water jets. To do this, first I'm going to open or import a file. So I'll come to File, Open, and go to the Examples folder located on C, Bobcat Cam Data, then your Bobcat Cam version, then Examples. For this, I'm going to use a 3D part. 2D or 3D, this is going to work about the same. We'll choose Open. This will bring in the model. Now, for users that have used earlier or previous versions of Bobcat, it used to be necessary to move or locate the part in reference to the zero, 00 point, how it was going to be cut. That's no longer true. The stock wizard defines the stock and also aids or helps you set up the origin for the part. So now it is necessary to add stock before adding any toolpaths. If you attempt to add a toolpath without having added milling stock, the toolpath will, or the system will force you into adding the stock. Now to add the stock, right click on milling stock and choose stock wizard. The stock wizard will ask you for a stock type, either rectangular, cylindrical, wireframe, which will allow you to select a 2D drawing or 2D edges for a wireframe. You can base the stock directly off of the solid model or an STL file. In this case we're going to choose rectangular. We'll choose next. Now the stock that gets defined to the part automatically sizes itself to the drawing. So if the drawing only displays the part that you'll be cutting, the stock will automatically be sized to that part. Now I'm rotating this on the screen using the control key on the keyboard and the right mouse button. And we could see that our stock's been sized exactly the size of the part to be cut. You can also change this from the auto from workspace which sizes the material to pick which allows you to just pick the geometry on the screen that you want to size the stock to. In this case let's use auto. You can also enter the size, length, width, and height of the stock. Let's say that since this part is close to 20 by 20, let's take the size that was automatically generated and change it to an exact number, 20 inches by 20 inches. You can see it, the stock updates on the screen. In this case, we have six inch high stock. Now, you can also add offsets in individual directions or add material to the stock. So let's say we want to add a half of an inch to the height or to the top of the stock. So in the Z positive direction, we'll add 0.5. And you'll see that the stock updates accordingly. And let's add a quarter inch to each side. So now our stock is a quarter inch bigger on each side and a half inch bigger in Z or in its height. Your stock orientation can also be rotated. In this case, the top of the part already is in line with the Z axis. If the part were rotated, we can also come in and pick new X and Y directions and origins for the material. So if you import a part that's not aligned with the system or rotated in an odd manner, you can go ahead and select a new orientation to work off of. Once we've done this, we click on the next button, or the arrows going to the right, and this will then ask us about where our origin is on the part. You could see some snap points have been created automatically by the system 
so that you can choose a location on the drawing. You can also set up a location manually by drawing a location on the screen. In this case, this is our first machine setup. Machine setups will allow you to machine multiple sides of the part. So perhaps you have one set up on the top and then one set up on the bottom of the part. This will allow you to have the machine move the head away from the part and pause for you to refixture or flip the part before continuing to cut the other side. Let's pick our origin and we'll choose the left hand corner of this. You'll see that a UCS has been or a user coordinate system has been developed. This is now the origin or the zero zero point that the machine will start cutting from. You can also reverse the directions of the axes with these buttons. Let's say we want to flip the Y axis and then flip the Z going upwards. So you get control over exactly how the origin is going to be laid out. You can also reset to stock coordinate which will center the origin based on the stock or manually pick the origin. You could choose the work offset that will be used on the machine. Work offsets are commonly G54, 55, and 56 in the code and those are the work offsets that you set up on the machine. Work offsets will be useful when machining using multiple vices or multiple fixtures. The clearance plane is the default location that the tool will travel at a rapid position at, or whenever the machine makes a rapid move, by default it will use this clearance plane. The clearance plane can be overridden at the feature level as well. If you're cutting with the fourth axis, define rotary axis allows you to pick a rotation point within the drawing to rotate around. More information on setting up for fourth axis cutting can be found within the help system. In this case, we'll choose OK, and we now have our machine set up one with the origin or the start location of where the zero is on the part. Where the drawing is in reference to the X, Y, and Z system in here, or the coordinate system, is unimportant. So if you import a part that's not sitting right at zero or needs to be rotated around, the stock wizard will address that for you. You can also come in and edit the machine setup, which will put you back into the stock wizard and allow you to make changes to the origin and the stock size. Once stock has been added to the part, you're then ready to start adding your toolpaths. We'll take a, just a simple default toolpath for this part. We come to our machine setup, right click. In this case, it's a 3D part, so we'll go to mill 3 axis. I'll choose an advanced rough and then select the geometry which in that case would be this model. Boundary allows us to select an individual boundary for machining a smaller area but in this case I want to mill to the entirety of the stock right down to the part. Our rapid plane that we had set is automatically pulled into the feature as 0.25 and our top of part is set at zero. The top of part can be changed as well as the rapid plane on a per feature basis. Our work offset is automatically selected to the work offset that we had defined in the machine setup. This can also be overridden or changed at this point. And indexes can also be output. Now let's take the default half inch tool, we'll allow it to cut zigzag and climb mill. As you follow through the wizard, if you click on each box, it'll give you an image depicting what the function or feature is going to do. Between the words and images, 
you should be able to make it through checking each item within the parameters as you go through to create your toolpath. In this case we'll use the center cutting tool and we'll plunge. We could set our options and our links. Once we've done this we click finish and then right click on the toolpath name in the cam tree and go to compute. Now that we've generated the toolpath for one side of the model, let's go ahead and hide the toolpath. To do this, we expand the advanced rough, right click on the tool rough, and go to blank. Now that we're ready to cut the other side of the part, let's add a new machine setup. Right now, we have this origin here that we're using. Let's say that we were to flip the part over this way and now cut from this side. So if we want the machine after cutting this side to pause, move up and away from the part and allow us to unclamp the part and then flip it over, we'll use another machine setup. So we'll right click our machine setup one, go to insert setup, right click our new machine setup and go to edit and what we'll do is we'll change the origin. Now we'll work off of this corner and then choose OK. This now gives us a new machine origin that we can work with. We can then right click our machine setup and add the additional toolpaths. For this we'll just choose the defaults And I'll increase my step over and depth of cut a little bit. And then compute the toolpath. Now we could see using one piece of stock, we now have toolpath that machines from both sides. So for every side of the part that you want to machine, you'll be adding a new machine setup so you right click a machine setup and choose insert setup and then that allows you to come in and edit the origin for the machine setup if you want to change your stock or edit the stock you come to milling stock and go to your stock wizard and update your stock from there 